book of Revelation shows that there will be no exit, no second rapture for the people of the world. They will either take the mark of the beast and perish, or they will not take it, and they will perish. The difference between the two is that those who take it will perish, face everlasting death at the great white throne judgment, which is Revelation 20, verse 12, and those who refuse the mark of the beast will perish physically, but will be rewarded at the first resurrection. Revelation 20, verse 5, before the millennial reign of Christ, they will be resurrected. That is their reward for not taking the mark of the beast. Surprisingly, the Old Testament gives prophetic pictures and details of these things so that we won't make the error of incorrect analyses of eschatology. That's the study of end time things, eschaton, the end times. The pre-tribulation rapture, the signing of the seven-year peace deal, the tribulation period, the return of Christ, all of it is given in types of shadows, and prophetic utterances in the Old Testament to give the sound believer in Christ the surety and hope of not being around when these calamitous events take place. I remember one time somebody, a lady emailed me when I said, I'm going to start preaching through uh, the, books of Gen the books of Moses. And she said, I, I just feel convicted that you're doing the wrong thing and you need to do the books of the prophecies, the prophets, because we're in the end times and people need to know. Everybody's been doing those books forever. You want to know about the prophets? There are 15 billion commentaries on them. There are not that many sound commentaries and sermons on. If you don't believe me, just go and type in Genesis 2, all right? And all of the sermons that have ever been done will come up, and there are about this many compared to the prophets, which are like way bigger than my arms can make, okay? I'm so happy that we have gone through the books of Moses and through the book of Joshua and now into Judges. I am so happy because the types and the pictures in there tell us so many things about what God wants us to know, okay? People may not agree. They may not like that approach, but I am so thankful for seeing what God is. You know, you want to know about the sealing of the Holy Spirit, the surety of your salvation, the 100% surety of your salvation. Go watch Genesis 38 where Judah sleeps with his daughter, Tamar. It's right there in that sermon. It will tell you everything you need to know about it. And it's one word sets the, the, the scene for the entire scenario, both in Genesis 38 and in Paul's writings in the New Testament. Anybody know what that word is? I've given it a million times in sermons. Aravon. Aravon. Go watch the sermon, Genesis 38. I've used it. It has come up. That word has come up many, many times in the book of Joshua, many times. In the Greek, the word means a seal or a pledge. And Paul uses it three times, and he uses it in the context of the sealing of the Holy Spirit. In Genesis 38, it is dealing with the signet cord, the staff, and the uh, three things, signet cord, uh, signet cord and staff of Judah. And that is the pledge that he gave to her, a Gentile. Mm -hmm. It's all right there. Daughter it's a, what's that? Daughter-in-law. Daughter, yeah, well, yeah, daughter-in-law, but it's daughter. Yeah, daughter, daughter-in-law. I call Faith my daughter all the time, so she's my daughter-in-law. Sometimes I call her, call her my daughter-in-law when she's on my bad side. Legally. But, yeah, no, anyway. <laughs>